Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day to be here. As Reagan said, I'm excited that you're here to learn more about how you can fund that college education that your child has been working so hard towards. So I'm going to share my screen. Okay, again, my name is Dion Clayton and I am fortunate enough to be housed in the district school counseling office. I'm a specialist. Well, first thing I want to know from everyone and um, you don't have to answer online, but what is a scholarship? We talk about scholarships all the time, but many times students nor parents really understand or know what a scholarship is. So here you have a detailed um, definition of what a scholarship actually is. And basically it's a financial um, award that students may receive uh, based on certain criteria that can be academics. It could be something regarding sports or a specific skill that they may have. And this is what's the most important part of the definition, free money. This does not have to be repaid. So these are the um, types of things you want to look out for or listen out for when you're looking at um, financing your, your child's college, um, college education. So we want scholarships, free money. Did you know? and I bet you it didn't, approximately 1.58 million scholarships are available to undergraduate and graduate students each year. The U.S. Department of Education awards an estimated $46 billion in scholarship money annually. And believe it or not, a lot of scholarship money goes unclaimed every year because students don't apply. So apply, apply, apply. Don't let that money go back to the government. On average, first time undergraduates who receive government grants and scholarships at a four year college receive about $13,690 annually. The average debt for a college graduate is almost $30,000. Dollars. So we definitely want to make sure that we stay away from uh, loans or anything of that nature so that your child does not graduate from college already with um, a substantial amount of debt. The National Merit Scholarship uh, Corporation rewards around $31 million annually to high performing high school students nationwide. Well, what's that, Ms. Clayton, you ask? The National Merit Scholarship can be earned uh, when students take the PSAT on their school campus. So if you hear your child or you receive something from your school and you find out that your school is offering the PSAT, you want to make sure that they take the test, that they go in to take the test with a very serious attitude, especially during the junior year, because that's the year that will qualify them for the National Merit Scholarship. So please make sure that you, um, if you want additional information about that, feel free to look up the National Merit Scholarship through College Board, because they're taking the PSAT which is also affiliated with the SAT in order to qualify for that scholarship. And if students qualify for the scholarship, they can earn up to hmm, close to a million dollars. So I think it's worth looking into. There are two types of scholarships. Um, one is renewable. So let's say, for instance, your child is planning to attend the University of North Florida and they are given a presidential scholarship. So I think that's the highest level of the scholarships that they offer on campus. So with that scholarship, they would receive X amount of dollars for the four years that they're planning to be on campus. So if it's if the presidential scholarship equals say $60,000, then you would divide that by the four years and they're going to get that money every single year. Another renewable uh, scholarship could be your Bright Futures scholarship, and we're going to talk more about that um, in a little bit. Uh, the next type is a non-renewable scholarship. 
these are scholarships that uh, students may obtain through organizations, and it might just be a one time deal. So let's say, for instance, uh, Aramark, which is one of the uh, companies that we use throughout the district, they offer a scholarship, but it's for one time. So the ch ch child will get um, a one time $1,500 check to use as they see fit. So you want to be sure when you're doing your financial planning for college that you pay attention to whether or not these scholarships are renewable or if it's just a one time deal. Let's talk about national financial aid. This is where we get into our free application for federal student aid, also known as the FAFSA. And I know some of you probably are rolling your eyes or nodding your heads now when I said FAFSA because we're all kind of stressing out about it right now. Um, if you don't know, this is the first uh, time in a while that the FAFSA has changed. So we are all learning about the nuances of the new uh, FAFSA application. So with the FAFSA, this form is an application for federal student aid. Uh, you need to complete the FAFSA form to apply for the student aid. And based on your application with that, it will also connect you with scholarship opportunities that might be within your state. So you want to make sure that all students um, and parents, you want to make sure that you complete the FAFSA, whether or not you feel, even if you feel like you um, you don't need to, to have any additional scholarships or you have it, you've been saving, whatever the case may be, there's nothing like getting free money. So you want to make sure that you complete the FAFSA. It is now open, um, be patient when you're going about completing the application, because like I said, the new FAFSA, um, it's just that it's new to all of us. So we're all learning as we're, we're going through this new process. So be patient and make sure that you use all of the resources that your schools, as well as the uh, FAFSA website provides for you. In addition, many states and colleges use the FAFSA information to determine their elig students' eligibility for state and school aid. So again, you complete the FAFSA. If your child is going to UNF or University of Florida, they may not um, qualify for any national funds that are out there, government funds, but they may qualify for fund funding that's available through the state of Florida. So please make sure that you complete that FAFSA. Just a few updates on the FAFSA. Um, like I said, it's, it got a, make, a makeover this year. And according to FAFSA, it's supposed to be simpler than in the, in the past. So there are fewer questions that you have to respond to. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have, no, you don't have to have your tax information from this year because it's using prior uh, income tax information and you'll be able to link that information with your account once you go in and set that up. A few other things, your expected family contribution, your EFC is now, it has a different name, so it is now known as the Student Aid Index, and that's where they basically use a formula to tell you how much FAFSA feels, because we know we may feel differently, how much FAFSA feels you can contribute to your child's college education. The SIA will use a new calculation to determine how much financial aid you qualify for. And the FAFSA, it, like I said, um, it, it's now open. Typically, it's open in October. October 1st is what we've known for some years now. Then it went to the end of December. Then it kind of ended up being the first part of January. So some uh, parents were saying that they were having some issues getting into the application, but I think all of the kinks have been worked out. So you should be able to successfully complete the FAFSA um, application at this time. Your Florida financial aid application, um, this is again, monies that you can get from the state of Florida. And this is just a snapshot of the website that you can go to and you'll get some more information about that um, in a little bit. 
where you can go to to get information about all of the grants and scholarship opportunities um, throughout the state of Florida. And this also includes the big one, which is Bright Futures. And speaking of Bright Futures, this is a snapshot of the requirements for the uh, Bright Future Scholarship. And this is a scholarship where students in the state of Florida, they graduate from a Florida high school, they may attend a public university within the state of Florida, and they must meet these guidelines in order to qualify for this scholarship. And there are two levels. There's the Florida FAS, the Florida Academic um, Scholarship, and then you see the high school credits and courses that the students must take in order to qualify for that. The GPA is a 3.5. You see the uh, necessary ACT, SAT, and now we also have the CLT, which is the classical learning uh, test that's available for students in the state of Florida. Students may qualify using 100 hours of community service or 100 uh, work hours or a combination of both of them. Then for your lower level of the scholarship, this is the medallion scholarship. Students need a 3.0 GPA. Then you see the listed test scores there and 75 hours of community service or work hours or a combination of the two. If you have a senior that's a, a child that's graduated in years prior, we no longer have the online requirement. If you're thinking, I, I think they had to do that. So that's no longer a requirement. Just some tidbits on college scholarships. Now is the time to apply. And parents, if you don't know this, um, please make sure that you're paying attention to your school's uh, school counseling website or maybe even the school's website because that's where we're posting that information. We are literally getting in scholarships daily that we send out to the high schools to share with families. So if you have no idea where to start, just um, contact your school counselor or ask your child where their school counselor has told them they can find the scholarships that the district and other organizations are sending to, to them. Please make sure if you're using any scholarship services that you're not paying a fee. Those that I will share with you are absolutely free. There are a lot of scams out there. So if anyone asks you to put a credit card number in when you go to a website, that's an absolute no-no. Please be aware of and meet all listed deadlines. You want to also make sure that you are familiar with and how to access scholarships. And here's a list of just a few for you. Scholarships360.org, scholarships.com, your high school websites that I just spoke about, as well as individual college websites. There are some scholarships that we may not know about as a district because each school may have their own pool of scholarship money and um, designated uh, scholarships that students can apply for. So you want to make sure that you take a look at the school's website to see what they have available to students. I want to go back and reiterate, be aware of and meet all listed deadlines. Deadlines are deadlines. If they tell you that your child qualifies for this $20,000 on February 1st, the information or application needs to be completed on January 31st to ensure that they can potentially earn that scholarship. So please make sure that you meet all deadlines. Did you know that assessments can equate to scholarships? I mentioned earlier um, about the National Merit Scholarship Program, and here's some more some detailed information about it. It's an annual competition for high school students, both traditional and homeschool. So if you have homeschool students, they will um, qualify. They're planning to attend college. Students need to take the PSAT, NMSQT, usually in their junior year, to be eligible for scholarships and recognition through the program. Taking the PSAT 8-9 or PSAT 10 
will not qualify students for this particular scholarship. So please, please, please encourage um, students, especially those that are, um, well, 10th grade now because they've already had it for junior year. If you are, have a 10th grader, you wanna make sure that you encourage them to do really well on this test next school year. Some scholarships to consider. Many of us are literally sitting on scholarship money and we don't even realize it. So what I did was created three columns of uh, scholarships that you probably hadn't even thought about. And this is money literally at your fingertips. So where you work, your places of employment, many employers offer their employees' children scholarship opportunities. So if you don't know, um, if your company or your whomever it is that you work for, if they offer a scholarship, you want to start asking around to, to find out or if there's a maybe a break room, a bulletin board or something where they post information, check it out to see because many of the places listed and of course there, there are thousands of others that um, offer these scholarship opportunities to their employees' children. So you want to take advantage of that. Next would be some places that we commonly shop. As much money as we all spend in Walmart, Publix, Target, I think it's only fair that they give us a little bit of that back so that your child can go to school. So all of the agencies, excuse me, all of the uh, stores that are listed there and restaurants offer scholarships. If you work for those places, ask um, about the scholarship opportunities, not only for your children, but for your, um, if you wanted to continue your education as well. So you want to make sure that you um, are looking and each one of these is listed on their actual website. They have either under community partnerships or it may even say scholarship right on their, um, on the, the header of their uh, websites. So pay attention to those. Then you have your community organizations. So you have fraternities and sororities, your church or synagogue that you may attend, uh, fun for, for first kids, coast kids. Um, they put out a publication every year for like summer programs, but they also have scholarship opportunities on their website. Then we have Aramark. Um, if you're a Girl Scout or an Eagle Scout, their scholarship um opportunities available through those organizations, the Veterans Association. So if parents, if you are a veteran, um, there are special privileges for your students as well as yourselves if you're planning or want them to attend school. So you want to make sure that you um, look at your veteran benefits to see what benefits or monies can be used to help pay for college. The Royal Vagabonds, then you have the Community Foundation of North Northeast Florida and the YMCA. These are just a few organizations that offer scholarship opportunities. So again, many of these um, organizations send information to either the district office or directly to schools, to the counselors. So make sure you are staying plugged in with the school so that you know specifically what's coming out. For some of the scholarships that students might want to apply for, they may need a letter of recommendation. So these are just a few pointers um, for parents and students if someone does need a letter of recommendation. Some high schools have a specific form for students to fill out if they should need one from a counselor or from a teacher. So make sure you know what, how they want you to go about requesting a letter of recommendation from a teacher or for, from your counselor so that you can get the letter that you want and get it in a timely manner. You wanna make sure that you're as descriptive as, as possible when you're um, asking for that letter, letting the person know exactly what the scholarship is, maybe how you're planning to use that money, um, tell them some things or even provide maybe a little bio about yourself, activities you were involved in so that they kind of know more about you than they, they already know to write a very uh, good and detailed letter so that you can get that money. 
the other thing is you must, must, must be courteous of people's time, especially school counselors and teachers. So you want to give them at least two weeks notice to get that letter. And I know things come up overnight or you find things out at the last minute, and that's great. But that might be a missed opportunity because you must give people time to write the letter because you want a letter that's going to be effective and efficient in getting you the scholarship that you're applying for and not just dear selection committee. Yes, I know John Brown. He was a great student. Sincerely, Miss Clayton. So you want to give them time to write a letter that is going to um, earn you that scholarship. Financial aid nights are being planned in every high school. So make sure that you stay plugged in with those nights so that you have specific questions about other forms of um, financial aid, not just scholarships. They'll talk about grants. They'll talk about loans, which we want to stay away from. But every high school will put on a financial aid night. So please make sure that you plan to attend um, that financial aid night that's being planned. You do not have to be a senior for that. You can go to the financial aid night to start learning information as soon as ninth grade if you are interested. Please don't forget that the Bright Futures and FAFSA applications are now open. So if we have senior parents on the line, seniors um, should be taking care of that now. With the FAFSA, there's a two part, there are two parts to it. There's a student application, the part that they can do by themselves, but you guys can work on it together. And then there's the parent part where you will set up um, an account in order to um, link the two applications. So please make sure that you're taking advantage of, of the time that you have now to get that, those applications completed. For uh, federal funds, you want to make sure that you get, get that application done because once the money is gone, it's gone. So take care of that as soon as possible. Just a reminder, don't forget your school's um, counselor is going to be your best friend when it comes to learning about what scholarships are available within the within the district or from organizations that are sending us information. So you want to make sure you know where you can locate that information. Um, make sure also there are some scholarships that are specific to a high school. So depending upon whom um, the alumni may be in the school or was in the school. Some schools offer scholarships based on um, funds that have been put aside for specific high schools. So please, please, please feel free to reach out to your school counselor and stay connected so that you will know what funding is available because as I said earlier, millions of dollars in scholarships goes, million dollars goes um, unclaimed because no one's applying for it. And I wanna share a story just to that point. I have a very good friend who in high school, um, I believe she was on the dance team or drill team at her school. And they had posted a scholarship that was through the LPGA. So that's the, the, the Women's Golfers um, Association. She had never played golf in her life other than putt-putt. That was it. She was not on the golf team. She had absolutely no interest in golf. Well, the scholarship was posted. The deadline came. The deadline went. No one applied. They reached back out to her counselor and said, please find someone that will apply for this so that we can give this money away and it will help them fund their education. Well, guess who filled out the application? and received that scholarship, and it was a renewable scholarship for the four years that she attended FAMU. Never played golf a day in her life. So please know that it is very important that you, anytime a scholarship opportunity becomes available, that you take advantage of it. Because just like in that situation, no one had applied, and then she went ahead and did it, they gave her the money. And there was more money to give away, but they had done it for several students. So your PTA in your schools, they ha typically have a scholarship that's available. And I think the stipulation is that the parent or the student be a member. So there are organizations right on your campus that are available for 
for you to you know earn scholarship dollars. So as you're out and about, just start asking people. You know about any scholarships that my son can apply for or what have you? Just start nagging people. And once they see that you have that fire in you about it, they will start pushing things your way. So it's okay to be a pest as long as you're getting free money because that's what we want, free money, so that you don't have to have loans at the end of your college education. So that goes, does it for me for my presentation. My child is a junior. What year should she apply? On the websites that I gave you, especially the scholarships360 and scholarships.com, um, um, you can apply for scholarships on there as early as ninth grade but you'd have to read the, the specifications on um, the scholarship. But generally speaking, most scholarships are for seniors, current seniors who are going to school in the fall. But again, you would have to read the specifications um, on, the, on the scholarship. But some of them you can start applying for as early as ninth grade. All right, I've got some questions in the chat that have come through. Okay. Uh, is there a deadline to apply for Bright Futures? The deadline to apply for Bright Futures is um, we typically tell parents, students, uh, seniors, the end of their senior year or the summer of their senior year, they still have time to take that last ACT or SAT um, because they start making awards end of July, first part of August. So you want to make sure that all of your information is in in a timely manner that the uh, DOE has had an opportunity to evaluate the records. So we strongly suggest that by the end of June, everything is taken care of, but there's still a little bit of leeway after that. Great. Uh, next question, FAFSA is based on 2023 taxes or 2022? That would be 2022. All right, my daughter is a junior currently at Riverside and is in the early college program. What do we need to be doing this year to get her ready for her senior year? Okay, making sure that she's um, prepared for uh, SAT and ACT, that she's sat for it at least once so that you can see um, what the performance level is. And then if some tutoring needs to take place, you can on um, co through College Board, they have co the Khan Academy, which is a tutoring service, and they also offer tutoring for any subjects. But what they will do is once a student has taken a PSAT or SAT, they will link their scores to uh, prescriptive tutoring so that they're only practicing and working on those skills that they're deficient in so that they can improve their scores. So first step would be, or suggestion would be making sure that she takes the SAT or ACT during junior year. Um, you want to make sure that you've had an official credit check done so that you can see what courses are still remaining to meet graduation requirements. And then I, when I was in a school, I would always tell students to make sure that they finish strong your junior year, because typically when you apply for college um, your senior year, it's at the beginning of your senior year or within the first nine weeks or so. So colleges are not going to even see your grades from senior year. So you have to really, really um, have a strong GPA by the end of your junior year to ensure that you get into the college or university of your choice. So those would be some of the, the tips that I would give you um, as a junior parent. Speaking of a junior parent, can a junior start applying now for colleges? Typically, no. Unless they are in some type of, say, like maybe the Duke TIP program or some specialized program, um, it's usually senior year. Okay. And it can be it can be the summer before senior year, like UNF has apply in July. Um, so they haven't officially become uh, seniors yet, but that's typically when they apply is at the beginning of the senior year. Does the same apply for FAFSA? Do they apply their junior year or wait until the summer before or they can't do it? Senior until year. Okay. It will senior. be in fast. You apply for FAFSA during your senior year and it could be December or January. It just depends on when the application opens, but senior year for the FAFSA. All right. Next question. Is there a way to know which scholarships are not need-based? Yes. And, and unfortunately, 
Um, you'll you'll have to read um, the requirements or the specifications for it because some of them, some are not um, need based. Uh, many of the ones that I listed on the in the presentation, many of those are not need based. So your your Burger King, your uh, Walmart, many of them are not need based, and then some um, have nothing to do with GPA. Uh, financial need, it could be for community service hours. So you would have to read the the scholarship opportunity to see what um, what they're looking for. Yes, I don't mind asking that loud. So um, I just wanted to know in terms of the FAFSA form when the best time to complete that is and will completing it earlier give us kind of like an outlook as to um, how much, you know, we're having to fund based on our you know, our, our numbers. Yes, the earlier, the better. OK, um, because again, these are federal funds, so there's a certain amount. And once that money is gone, it's gone. And same thing for the, the state funds. So, I mean, we have a 10th grader. He's in 10th grade. So, I mean, mm -hmm. I was just saying in terms of if you wanted to do it this year, just to say, okay. no, 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 no. Senior year. That senior is senior year. year. OK, but that's the is specific senior to senior year. Mm -hmm. Okay. I have another question. You had mm -hmm. also mentioned it's good to have the grades, his grades, I mean, I guess, you know, solidified by the end of the junior year. That's what colleges are going to be looking for as, you know, as senior year, as he's, I guess, uh, continuing to apply to places and everything. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, what about the classes that, you know, will help him probably, I guess, get accepted to a college and everything that he's going to be doing his senior year? Mm hmm Oh. So this is this is typically how it goes. When you apply, let's say University of Florida, their deadline may be October 17th, November 1st. So the only thing they've received senior year is a report card for the first nine weeks and that's it. Our grades are done in semesters. So if he's applying for University of Florida to meet that November 1 deadline, all the only grades that they're going to see are the ones through the end of junior year. He right. will also submit the current schedule and um, trans he'll upload, um, I'll say a transcript, they all call them different things, but he'll complete a transcript so that they can see up to the end of junior year and the current classes that, that he would be enrolled in. So their expectation is they're, in, they're basically accepting him based on the GPA that he had at the end of junior year, as well as the test scores that he is going to have on the ACT, SAT, or the CLT. So they will, in you know, say based on those items, okay, yes, we're going to admit you to the university. However, comma, if at the end of the senior year, the GPA has dropped, the student has failed multiple classes or is not doing well, Colleges will rescind their offer because the student trailed off. And it happens more than I care to admit because students get senioritis senior year and they just they just stop performing. So they may be admitted at the end of junior year based on what they have, but just know that it can be taken away from them. So they have to remain cons uh, consistent with those grades um, or test scores throughout senior year. The ability to get scholarships, will she have that if she's not a senior? If, if she takes this gap year, will she still have access to new scholarships coming in, even though she's not a high school student anymore? Yes, she will. Okay. And again, when you um, when you apply for a school, you would still be considered a freshman. So whatever scholarships are available to freshmen. Um, you would still be able to apply for? Um, yes, my daughter's considering applying to a private school, and I was wondering how the Bright Futures would work in that instance. It's only for students attending a public university in the state of Florida. My sidekick is going to jump in for just a second on this one. Okay, for private school students, we refer private school students to the Bright Futures website because we don't process those applications. So there is a chart that equivalent, uh, that is equivalent to the Bright Future funds that are available for state funds um, uh, institutions. So please, if you're going to a private school, 
please see, go to the website, the Bright Futures website, and you can get that information from the website. Are there specific scholarships for high achieving students with IEPs? There are, and your um, ESE teacher, resource teacher, should be able to share what those are because there are some through vo vocational, through the vocational ed program um, that they could qualify for, and um, they would be able to direct you specifically for those scholarships. Okay, and same for but those. But they still students. can they still can apply for any scholarship, whether right. they have an IEP or not, if they meet the requirements for the scholarship. All right. Well, I think that's a wrap for us. Just apply, 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 and make sure that you apply on time, if not early, so that you can um, get yourselves or your 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 children in a better financial um, situation. But please, please, please make loans your absolute last. Um, resort. And I have told parents in the past, if you have to look at making a loan for the child to go to this to a school, um, you may want to kind of rethink your situation or your selection and maybe look at another avenue where you don't come out um, paying out of your pocket or having to pay out of your pocket after you've graduated and they've already um, kind of racked up some 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 debt so a degree is a degree so just remember that families i hope you were able to take away some new information you learned something new thank you so much for joining us in the middle of a busy work day we appreciate seeing you and hope that you're able to join us again at another parent academy course in the near future